So uh, today we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks for grading in Canvas. Specifically, what the we're going to cover today is giving students extra credit, how you can do that in Canvas. Um, we're going to be covering how you can grade using a rubric to speed up grading. Um, and um, then we're going to discuss how to get the total grade in Canvas to calculate accurately um, closer to how you like to weigh all your assignments and quizzes. Um, we're also going to be covering how you can drop the lowest grades, for example, for things like weekly homeworks. And then we're going to go into some of the features that they introduced in January. Um, how to give an automatic grade for missing submissions for assignments and quizzes, how you can give late penalties automatically, and also how do you control in this new system when your students see the grades that you are giving them. So the first topic we're going to cover is giving extra credit. There's no official way of giving extra credit. There's nothing to mark something as extra credit. So we have to use a workaround. And the workaround is to create an assignment that is worth zero points. And then when you give that assignment points, those count as extra credit. There is a couple of caveats with this. Um, in order for this to work, you have to put this assignment with other assignments that are actually out of points. You can't just have these kind of assignments all together um, worth zero points in one assignment group. So that is uh, needed. And we also suggest that you use no submission instead of online submission so that uh, there's no, it will have no interference from late penalties or automatic missing grades or anything like that. Um, so I have an assignment group called assignments and I'm going to create an assignment here worth zero points so I can show you exactly how this works out. So in here in my assignments I'm going to click plus assignment and I'm going to call this bonus grade and I'm going to leave it worth zero points and I'm going to change the submission type to no submission and then I'm going to save and publish of course I don't have to worry about deadlines or anything like that because I'm not asking the students to submit anything so I'm gonna go back into the grade section I have a student that somehow miraculously has managed to get 100% on everything that uh, I had before all assignments, all quizzes. This student got 100%. So I'm going to give 20% extra points as a bonus grade. And you will see now that from 100%, the total has gone up to 102%. So you can see that the extra credit is actually working. And if I go back into my assignments, do note that I have placed this bonus grade here in the assignment section where I have regular assignments worth uh, points in here. So that is how you get uh, as a little workaround to give extra credit. Um, I know that some people in the past have tried to use quizzes for extra credit. That does not work because with quizzes you can now give zero points. And um, if you try to turn a survey, an ungraded survey, in um, a regular quiz into an ungraded survey, all the grades will get wiped out by the system. So that is no longer a possible workaround. The other topic I wanted to cover was rubrics. One second, let me look at the chat. OK, one second, I will go to that. Let me put the chat on my other window. So I'm going to edit this so you can see. So the crucial important things here is to have points zero, to make sure that an assignment group is one chosen that has other assignments worth points, 
and display the grade as points. This is usually default. And submission type is no submission. These are the important things. Everything else does not matter. So these right here are what matters. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save again. Okay, so next we're going to, uh, I'm gonna show you grading with rubrics. So first I'm going to show you an assignment that has a rubric right here. I've already attached this rubric and I'm going to show you how easy it is to quickly grade um, using this kind of rubric. So the idea with a rubric is that you have several criteria. This is great for essays and research papers and things like that where there are certain criteria that you already are instinctually looking for. So for example, I took a sample essay rubric and put it in Canvas where I, the three criteria are organization, level of content, and development of ideas. And for each of criteria, you can set up ratings. The great thing about rubrics is that you give a point of value, but also a description. So when you are choosing that um, rating, the student gets not only the point value, but also a description that summarizes exactly kind of where their essay or paper is in terms of this particular criteria. So if we're looking, for example, at organization, someone whose uh, essay is ad only adequate would get a feedback that writing is coherent, logically organized, but some points remain misplaced and stray from the topic. So you can uh, easily keep um, everything um, a lot more um, coherent for yourself without having to repeat the exact same feedback. You can still give individualized feedback. Um, so I'm going to show you exactly how that works. So in this assignment, I'm going to hit speed grader. I have one submission that is not graded. So I'm going to look right on the here below the grade box. I now have view rubric. When I click that, I'm going to stretch this out so on my tiny screen you can see. I can see all the criteria and all the ratings. And I can pick, for example, this student is above average organization, adequate level content, adequate development. I can also give individualized comment for each criteria if I want to as well. To the right of where it shows the points, I have a little chat box. When I click it, I can leave a comment. So you can leave a comment there. Once you've chosen all the criteria and any comment that you might want to leave, you click save and now you'll see that the total has been calculated for you based on the ratings that you have chosen for that student. And the student will also see all these descriptions of the rating that they have gotten. Um, I. I got to control and put in exactly how many points is each particular rating. So when I'm picking, I'm picking from ones that I've chosen. But let's say that you want to put in 30 points, you no longer get the the rating um, comment if you put in your points. You can still put in the points, but it will no longer be associated with the rating. So the point is to pick ratings when you're creating the rubric so that it encompasses most situations that you are encountering. And um, again, the, if you need to be more specific, you have some comments. I picked a big range that is 50, but most people will pick something like from zero to five where they're giving zero, one, two, three, four, five, and generally not in between. So um, that is something that you can keep in mind. You, can, you get to control exactly how many ratings uh, levels there are and how much they're worth.
But you can see how now I don't need to give overall comments for each person and write them out uh, on, on these different criteria that I'm looking for and, and also helps the students to know exactly what you're looking for. So if I close this and go this, uh, back, the students see my, uh, my criteria and the ratings for each criteria together with the assignment so they know exactly what I'm expecting. Uh, I'm going to show you how to attach a rubric. So my assignment one has no rubric currently. And when you don't have a rubric, you see a plus rubric at the bottom. When you click that, you can create a rubric right here, but I'm going to pull up one of my existing ones. So I'm going to hit find a rubric on the top right corner. And I'm going to go to this course. I'm going to click simple rubric. So you can also have a simple one with just one criteria like this one. What I'm going to make sure is that this rubric is going to be used for grading because you can use the rubric just for informational purposes so the students know what to expect, but I want to use it for grading. So I'm going to click the little pencil to the right of the name of the rubric. And when I do, it shows me my ratings. And over here, there are several options. The one I'm going to turn on is use this rubric for assignment grading. And I'm going to check that and then I'm going to hit update rubric. So now when I, um, if I were to go and grade, I would be able to view this rubric, choose a rating, and that would automatically update the student's grade for that particular assignment. Okay. Da. So the next topic we're going to discuss is um, basically how to get all the assignments and quizzes and stuff weighted in such a way that the total is calculated more accurately. So um, you can choose to perfectly curate the amount of points that each assignment or quiz has so that it all balances out. But there are some tools to help you a little more so you don't have to do all that work um, setting up the perfect amount of points, especially when it comes to quizzes. So we're, I'm going to show you how you can use assignment groups to do that. So in our case here, we're going to set up the groups as I would um, my grading. So for example, I would like to have assignments worth 20%. I would like to have my final exam by itself worth 30%, my quizzes worth 40%, and the homeworks worth 10%. So in order to achieve that, I need to make sure that I have assignment groups for all these percentages. So for example, right now, my final exam is together with my quizzes. So I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to hit plus group on the top. I'm going to call this final exam. And now I'll put that at the bottom and I can drag this assignment group over here right next to my quizzes. And then I can drag the final exam into assignment group, final exam. By default, normally you get uh, assignments um, is one of the default groups that appears to begin with. And most things get put in here by the system by default. Everything else I've created myself. So now I have all my assignments, all my quizzes, everything created, put in groups as I would like everything to be weighted. Now I have to tell Canvas exactly how much each is worth. So on the right hand side here, next to plus assignment, I will click three vertical dots and I have assignment groups weight. This is how I turn this on. I click that and I get a pop up. This says weight final grade based on assignment groups. I put a check mark and now it will show me all my groups with a box allowing me to put in percentages. So as I said, I would like assignments 20, quizzes to be 40%, final 30, homeworks 10%. 
please make sure that it's 100% total when it's all said and done. And now I'm going to save. Now when I go into, you can see right now that to the right of each assignment group, it now has a percentage. So all of them have a percentage to the right. I'm going to go into the grade so you can see the impact. So this per, uh, one person, John student, had 100%, 102% from the extra grade, but because I made the entire assignment group only worth 20%, that extra po those extra points have now lost some of their weight. And now he only has 100.9%. Great. And you can see here on the right hand side, if you scroll all the way to almost the total column, you can see all the assignment groups. And A all tell you how much they're worth of the total grade. And they also provide you a percentage that each uh, of those assignments in the group are worth. So for example, for John's student, I have the assignments group. It is, his score for that group is 104%. For quizzes, is 100%. For final exam, 100%, and so forth. Of course, within each assignment group, I still have to make sure that I am balancing things out. So for example, I gave 200 points for assignment three, which makes it worth twice as much as assignment one. So we have to keep in mind that those points still count within each assignment group. With assignment groups, you can also set it up that you can drop the lowest grades. Keep in mind, you can choose to drop the highest grade as well if you would like. So for in my case, I'm going to set up the uh, monthly homeworks to drop uh, the lowest grade. So all I do is to the right of the actual assignment group where it tells me the percentage. There's the three vertical dots. I click that. I click edit. And now it'll show me the name, the percent of total grade if that is turned on. And then I'll, it has a box for dropping lower scores or higher scores. You can enter any number, of course. It has to be lowest than the amount of assignments or quizzes inside that particular group. And you can also, as I said, drop higher scores. And you can also tell it never to drop a particular um, homework or assignment or quiz. You click Add Assignment, and then you get to choose one of the ones here. So I'm going to save. And I'm also going to set it up for the quizzes section. I'm going to set up to drop the lowest score. And I'm going to make sure that the survey never gets dropped. Now we're going to go to the grades section. And I will let you know about a couple of caveats on how this works. So for our three homeworks, homework one, two, three, John got 10 points on each of them. It's exactly the same score, so it just randomly picked one of them to drop. And it puts an orange background to let you know which grade was dropped. Now, again, if um, the homeworks or assignments or quizzes that are inside that group are all worth the same amount of points, um, what it chooses to drop is pretty simple, the lowest grade. For everything else, it drops the lowest percentage. Now, the odd things start when you have zeros. So, for example, if you have a group where someone has zero out of one point for one homework, and then the other homework, they got two out of ten, it will drop the two out of ten because when the student is assigned two out of 10, they're losing out on eight points. When they're assigned, assigned zero out of one, they're missing out on one point. So what Canvas looks at is the one assignment grade that has the, the biggest negative impact on the student's overall total grade. So normally, if it's, there's no zeros involved, you can think about it in terms of it's dropping the lowest percentage. But when zeros are concerned, zero seems like 
the lowest percentage, you have to think about how many points is the student losing out on by getting that grade. That's what it it looks like. So I'm going to, for uh, iPad, I'm going to give this student some grades here. So that you can see. And as the semester progresses, it will always be dropping the lowest grade. It doesn't wait until the end of the semester to drop the grade. Um, so keep in mind, I had a professor set up, he had like, I think a total of like 15 uh, weekly homeworks in one group, something like that, and he had set it up to drop the lowest three. And one of his students contacted us because it was like, my grade keeps not changing because uh, he was dropping the lowest three. So until the student um, got to like the fifth homework, they weren't really seeing a difference because all the grades except the, the highest grade kept getting dropped uh, for the student and his first homework had happened to be the highest grade he had gotten so far. So he was concerned that his uh, grade was not changing. It was because all the other um, homeworks were getting dropped until he had like five total homeworks or more. Then he started seeing the impact of new homeworks that he was submitting. So that is another thing to keep in mind. Again, if I do, um, okay, well, let's create those separately. So now we've looked at everything we can do pretty much with assignment groups. We can tell Canvas how much they're each worth for the total grade. We can tell a Canvas to drop um, as any assignments or quizzes inside of them. And now we're going to cover, as I said, the, the new gradebook features they introduced in January. First one is the missing uh, submissions. So if someone does not submit by the due date, the student will get, um, in, in your gradebook view, they will get a red background. And of course, there's always a dash for no grade you can have the system automatically give that student a zero or whatever percentage you would like the moment the due date hits. Now, this doesn't mean if you allow late submissions, as soon as the student submits late, that zero will get replaced by a little icon saying that there's a submission for you to grade. So I'm going to show you how you turn this on. You turn this on for the entire course. On the right hand side in the gray book, there's a little gear icon to the right of the search box. We're going to click that. And the first tab is called late policy. Despite its name, it doesn't just deal with late, uh, late submissions. It also deals with missing submission. This first option, automatically apply grade for missing submissions. When we click uh, the box to the left, we put a check mark into it, and then we get to tell it exactly what the grade should be and then we hit update. Keep in mind, you can use this and turn this on pretty much any time during the semester, but do keep in mind that if you, um, if you already entered zeros or other grades for a person with missing submission status, it will not override. So if you decided to give a grade other than zero in the past, if you entered the grade manually, then the system will not be erasing what you enter to put in zero. It will only put in zeros for the dashes, meaning missing submissions. So it will take it, uh, if you have like 50 students, it will take it a couple of minutes to update. I just refreshed to show test student. So it will take it uh, a little bit of time the first time you turn it on to put in the zeros for all the existing missing um, submissions that were not graded by you. And now you can see that test student has a couple of zeros and um, this is the first student iPad has a zero as well. Uh, again, this applies if there is a due date. My other assignments that you see here other than assignment three, do not have due dates. So this is not possible for the student 
um, to be have a missing grade because I never told the system that there's a due date. Um, also, this missing grade only works with online submissions because the system needs to know exactly when the student submitted and if the student submitted. Um, if you are using no submission, for example, like I did with the bonus grade, it will not know that there's anything missing because it's not expecting submissions. If you're using uh, something external tool like turn it in again the system will not know if this person submitted on time or not because all the submissions are getting done on turn it in side if you are using um, the option to, to tell canvas that the students are submitting to you in person again the system does not know that that submission is missing um, so those are kind of the caveats now for the next topic is late submissions the same kind of caveat applies so late penalties can only take effect automatically when the system knows that something was submitted late if there is no due date then there's no way for the system to know that it was late if there's no submission coming through canvas again the system does not know that this was late um, with uh, these late submissions, it will apply across the entire um, the entire course, including retroactively. So when it comes to late penalties, turning this on is something I suggest you do only before the classes start, before you started um, entering grades, because uh, for professors that use late penalties. They generally apply them for most things, and they generally have already applied them manually. Most people who do lay penalties already have done the math and entered the final grade for that assignment or quiz. And then uh, when you apply the automatic lay um, penalties, it will apply them on top of what you entered because it considers whatever grade you've entered so far to be the full grade. So do keep in mind this is not a good idea to turn out mid-semester if you've already been giving late penalties. So let's see how this works. On the right hand side here in the grades, I'm going to click the gear again. Now we dealt with the top part that has to do with missing submissions. The second part it has to do with the late penalties. And we have an option here, automatically apply deduction to late submissions. We click to the left of that, now we have a check mark, and we get to say exactly how much percent per day or hour, we can pick hour here, and also what's the lowest grade the student can get. So I'm gonna put 10% deduction per day, and the lowest grade they can get is 60%. So the way this works is every day that the student is late, they will get 10% off whatever the total for that assignment or quiz is. Uh, these, for my, in my example where I said the lowest they can get is 60%, in that case, for example, if someone is three days late, they'll get 70% of whatever it is they received for their effort. But if they're five days late, instead of being 50%, it will still be only 60%. I'm capping it off. Of course, you can choose to put 0%. This controls how far and how much penalty it is. I will show you the due dates and the until dates. That is how you can control how, how late you allow the students to submit. So you can still control that with the due dates and the available until date. So I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to apply this late um, submission. I'm going to turn it on. And now I'm going to go to assignment three. I have a submission over here that is late. And I'm going to go and grade it. So you can see what happens and what the feedback is like. So I'm going to go to assignment and on the right hand side, I'm going to click speed grader. Okay, so this student was late. I can see when they submit it, tells me it's late. 
And I, let's say I look through their submission and I say they did a great job. They got 200. As soon as I click away from this box anywhere, it now takes into account what my uh, late penalty rules are, how late the student uh, submission was, and it automatically calculates a penalty. The beauty with this is that this is shown to the students as well. So you no longer have to tell the student, hey, you actually got 200 out of 200, great job, but you were late X amount of days, so you get only 120. The system is doing that for you. It tells them immediately how much their effort got them, which is 200 points, how much being late cost them, and what their final grade is. So they can see that you no longer have to explain it and tell them. Of course, you need to let your students know about late penalties ahead of time in syllabus or however you choose. But the point is, every time you enter a grade and they were late, you don't have to sit there doing the math and explaining to them why they got a um, 80, 80 points taken off their submission. And if we go into the grade book and we look there, when you're looking at the grades in the grade book for some, for some a submission that was late, right here it will show the final grade. But when I click in, it shows me the grade I actually gave their effort so that I can change that in the system. So let's say I decide to uh, 200 was a mistake. I put 180 instead. It will do the math all over again for me. That's why it's allowing me to edit the original grade, not the grade with the penalty. Also, when I click inside this grade, on the right hand side, there's an arrow. When I click that, I can see here that I gave them 200, what the late penalty was, and also how late they were. The other thing that I can do here is, let's say that this student was late, they got their penalty, and then they brought me doctor's note or anything like that that would explain their lateness and make it so um, their excuse for the lateness. I can now, from here, in the status section where it tells me they were late and how late, I can now click the circle next to none and uh, you can now see that the student is getting full grades. I don't have to go back and do the math and figure out how much their, um, the quality of their work actually got them. I just changed one status and they're back to full grades um, and they will also be able to see that. Now, something similar can happen with the missing grade because the missing grade is an automatic grade that you enable but the missing status is something that applies all the time. So in my case we had this survey, this poor student got a zero because they didn't do it but let's say they had an excuse and I want to excuse them from this particular survey altogether. I just don't want this to count for them. So what I have to do is I click inside the box that is matching the survey grade for that particular student and then I click the arrow and now again we see the status is saying missing on this one okay I can now choose excused okay and then I go back here and now they're excused they'll be able to see that what this means is this survey will not count towards the total grade for this particular student so that's what excuse does and it's one click of a button i went from them getting a zero for the missed assignment to them getting excused for it so you still have control you can take the lateness status is automatically applied the penalties you decide how much they are they will apply but you can always take them back if you need to so the last topic we're going to cover is a bit more complicated. So I'm not sure if you notice, but a whole bunch of my columns have crossed out eyes and even my total has crossed out eyes for all the students. And then I even have the word manual all over uh, the, um, the second line of each column. So what is going on is I'm making use of 
this new feature they call in grade posting policy. So it is a way of controlling when the students see the grades that you enter. They are now allowing you to control it course wide for the entire course, but also for individual uh, assignments and quizzes. Um, and you set it up ahead of time. So you set this all up at the beginning of a semester, for example, before you entered any grades, and it will take that into account. What this means is, for example, you can have your entire um, course set up uh, to automatically post grades, which means the students will see the grades as soon as you enter them, but you can go in and change that to uh, be manual for the midterm and final exam, for example, which means that the students do not see the grades as you are entering them. You have to click a button to get this, uh, to basically release the grades to the students. The opposite is also achievable now. You can have most of the, your course to not release grades as you're posting them until you choose to release all of them, uh, all of the grades for an assignment at once. And then you can have a couple of uh, low impact assignments set up to automatically the, release the grades so you don't have to worry about them. They're not the kind of assignments you're going to have to um, weigh out or have to adjust at any point. So you want those to release as soon as you enter it. You can achieve both of these scenarios now. So how does this work? So the course level option is available from that same gear to the right of search that we were using earlier. Now we have been using the late policies tab over here. We're now going to switch to grade posting. By default, this is set up as automatic. I've set mine as manual just to um, show you how that works. By the way, default, it's automatic. So as I said, automatic means as soon as you enter the grade in speed grader or in the grade book, the student can see it. Manual means the student cannot see anything until you have chosen to release those grades and they call that post grades. So you if you want to switch to manual for most of your course, you would change it here like I have it to manually post grades and hit update. As I said, you can also control the individual uh, homework. So for example, here I have homework one is, is automatic. I I can click the hover over the name of it, click the three vertical dots, and this new menu that appears at the bottom has grade posting policy as well. When I click that, I can change that to manual and click save. The opposite is also true. In my case, I have most of them manual. If I want, I can make homework two from manual to automatic. I again hover over the name click the three vertical dots, click Great Posting Policy, and I can choose Automatic, Save, and that changes it. Now, a caveat about these things. If you change them after you've already entered some grades, the grades you've already entered will not be impacted. So the posting policy only applies to anything you enter after. So for example, for homework one, if I switch this to manual, at this point in time, my two first two students, it will not hide away the grades they already have. However, when I enter a grade for test student, that student will not see the grade immediately until I release it. Now for homework two, we look at the opposite. For homework two, it was set up as manual when I entered these two grades. If I switch it to automatic, these two students do not suddenly see those grades. Those grades are still hidden from these two students. But when I enter a grade for test student and this becomes automatic, that student will see the grade as I enter it. So that is something to keep in mind. That's why I strongly advise you set this up before you enter grades. If you don't set it up for everything, at least set it up for each 
assignment or quiz before you start entering grades for it. Okay, so we covered the caveat. Let's say you are all set up as you want to release grades. How do you release the grades? So we're going to look at homework two because this one's manual. We have two grades in here. So the way I release these grades to my students is I hover over the name. I click the three vertical dots and here in the middle you can see post grades. When I click that, I now have options. I can release all every single grade, including test student has a dash. It would also release the no grade to that student. I can only release the ones I've graded so far, which is what the second option is. So if I only graded half of them, I can choose to release that half for now. And then the next day I'll grade the rest and release the rest. I can also choose specific sections. This particular um, uh, test course only has one section, unfortunately, but the idea is you turn this on and you can pick only one section. That's useful if you have joined your sections together, you can grade one section's um, assignment, post the grades for them, then grade the other section another day and then post those. So you have options on what you can post. So we're gonna post every grade. I'm gonna hit post. Now you can see that the crossed out I has disappeared, but the word manual has not disappeared because this still has a manual um, policy applied to it. So Let's say that this was my midterm and I graded, I released all the grades, but then it came to my attention that one of the questions was, uh, there was a mistake in it and therefore um, it, it really, there was no correct answer actually provided. So now I gotta adjust everyone's grades to, uh, to not have that question in there and things like that. So I can still take this back. So homework two, let's say that's my midterm. I released the grades to the students, but now I need to adjust them. Instead of getting half the students getting adjusted grades and the other half not adjusted, as I'm going through, I wanna hide all the grades from them, work on everything, then release it again. So how I do that, I hover over the homework two, click the three vertical dots. Because I posted these grades, I have hide grades now available to me. When I click that, again, I can hide all the grades. Again, I could choose only specific sections. And now the grades are all hidden again. The eyeball has come back. When I'm done adjusting, again, I click the three vertical dots, click post grades, and post them again. Again, caveat. When it comes to the manual posting, uh, uh, grade posting, like homework two, things are very straightforward. When it comes to an automatic one, like homework one, when you click the three vertical dots, you will notice the high grades is not grayed out. Unfortunately, it should be because if you try to hit hide grades on something that had automatic grade posting, it doesn't suddenly take the grades back from the students. It doesn't do anything. So I wanted to make sure to mention the fact that you can, the hide grades only really does anything if you were using manual posting policy, you posted the grades, and now you want to hide them again. If you were using automatic, hide grades does nothing. Unfortunately, they chose not to have them grayed out for some reason, but that's the unfortunate truth. Okay, so we have a couple of minutes, I think, if you guys have any questions about the grading. Um, we do not have a video yet. I'm recording this, but I'm not sure how well this is going to go. However, we do have a, this everything I covered with walkthroughs and pictures as a self-paced Canvas course. Let me just um, show you where that is. Okay, let's see.
So I'm not sure if you guys have ever gone. Let me log out to web one so you don't, guys don't have to put up with that, all that interface. So when I don't know if you've gone to the main canvas page, but basically when you go to log into the portal, if you click canvas icon here, it takes you to the main IT canvas page. And on the left hand side of that, there's faculty workshops. And you'll see the first one here is this one, but there's a self-enroll Canvas course that goes over, um, covers everything that I talked about. Okay, we... Okay, I'll let you finish what you're typing there. Meanwhile, I'm gonna show you what this course looks like. So this course basically covers everything I talked about with all the caveats and the information and you just go through and you can see that it gives you the steps, the screenshots of everything I talked about. It links to the full guides by um, Instructor, the people who bring you Canvas. It links to so that those have even more information, but I'm covering exactly what I'm talking about with screenshots and all the steps.